Hello there. Let's talk about birth angels today. All right, so here's our, um, here's a sketch of our tree, right? And we have, let's remember who we have for our birth angels. We have Saturn here, which is Cassiel. We have Jupiter here, which is Sakiel. So let's read that. Let's see if you can see what I'm doing. We have Mars here, which is uh, Samael. We have the Sun here, which is Mikael. We have Venus here, which is Anael. We have Mercury here, which is Raphael. And we have the Moon here, and that is Gabriel, right? All right. So now we've had some just nice, wonderful discussions on um, the um, Facebook group. <laughs> Sorry, I had a little brain moment there. We have had some nice discussions about birth angels on the Facebook group. And if you're not on the group, we would love to have you there because we want you to join in. Now, Traditionally, there were only two birth angels. There was your, the, the primary angel was this, the, the angel which rules the sign that the moon was in at your moment of birth, at the day of your birth. So when you were born, like for me, I'm born um, with the, the, the moon was in Aquarius when I was born. So in the old system, that would make Saturn be my birth angel. And that still works. Cassiel, I mean, Cassiel, um, can be my birth angel. I can I can work with Cassiel. We, that's the old that's the old um, way. Now in this system, one of the first other angels that was introduced. Now there are some other angels that we don't work with yet because they are very challenging. But one of the, the, the one of the outer angels that was added very early on was Uriel, and you can read all about him in all the apocrypha and things like that. But as far as this birth angels, I think. I think he was introduced, if you look in the book of Raziel, I believe that's the first um, sign of, of that. Now remember, for us, he's not on the tree in a sphere. He is the uh, lightning bolt. So he is this action here. That's real. So if you have Aquarius as your moon sign, your birth angel, you can work. And a lot of systems say start out working with Cassiel because Uriel is very, can be very challenging. But the way I was taught that if Uriel, that Uriel can be challenging for people who don't have him as their birth angel. Okay, so if, if your moon is in Aquarius, you're probably safe to work with Uriel. Now, we'll talk about what, how to do that in a second. But for the rest of us, for the rest of you who don't have um, um, Aquarius moon, whatever your moon sign is, that's the angel that is your primary birth angel. So if you have Aries moon, then Samael is your primary birth angel. If you have Taurus moon, Anael is your primary birth angel. If you have Gemini moon, then Raphael is your primary birth angel. If you have Cancer Moon, Gabriel is your primary birth angel. Uh, if you have Leo Moon, Mikael is your guy. It's your primary birth angel. Uh, Virgo Moon, you also have Mercury as your primary birth angel. Libra, you also have Anael as your primary birth angel. Moon and Libra. Uh, if, you, if Moon is in Scorpio, then you have also Samael as your primary birth angel. Um, Sagittarius is your birth angel, then you, you have Sakiel as your primary birth angel. I mean, if, you, if your moon is in Sag, Sakiel. Capricorn, you also, if your moon is in Capricorn, you also have Cassiel as your primary birth angel. Uh, Aquarius, we've talked about Uriel, or you could also use Cassiel, that's fine. Pisces, in the old system, you got... Um, you've got Sakiel as your primary birth angel. Now there are other birth angels for some of these outer planets that we will get into at a later time, but they are very challenging to work with. Right now, the only one I would recommend, excuse me, working with is Uriel. And that is especially uh, if you have 
your moon in Aquarius. If you have your moon in Aquarius, Uriel is somebody that is as an angel that you're going to not have too many problems working with. But if that seems a little bit much for you, because his energy can be a lot, then you can go, go ahead and stick with Cassiel. And like I say, a lot of teachers want everybody to start out with Cassiel if they have Uriel as their birth angel. I am not one of those people. I think that you can handle it. Okay. But you're free to do so. You are always free to use Cassiel if you have Aquarius. Now, your secondary birth angel is where your sun sign was. Is So if, if your sun is in Aries, same thing. Uh, then you have uh, Samael, sun is in Taurus, Anael, etc., etc., around the, around the zodiac wheel. All right? Now, we have, over the years, a lot of us have added, a lot of teachers have added other less primary birth angels. So I think the most important one that you're going to, that you will encounter is the angel of your ascendant. So if you know the time of day you were born, the time of day that you were born um, will show you your ascendant if you do a chart. And then your ascendant is going to be like your tertiary angel. It's not as prominent, not as important as those, as, as your, your moon angel is your main angel. And this is why the, um, the moon represents natal experiences. It represents birth. So it is been, it, the tradition is where the moon was at your birth is your primary birth angel because it comes through the moon in your chart. The sun is your secondary one. It's, a, it's like a helper angel. Now your rising sign is a little bit more of a help. A little bit and you can use them I mean there's no you can't I mean you can use any angel you can work with any angel in the system you want but you but but the ones with the most significance are your is first of all your moon angel that's the one that you should probably work with the most and then your sol solar angel now uh, your, your rising sign is the is the next one now there are systems and I do include them that that your your uh, that what day of the week you were born on talks about another angel that might have been in attendance at your birth and and you can definitely notice that notice notice where that was now where we get into some some gray area is if you're starting to work with planetary hours as your birth angel and this is uh, we were talking about this today and I thought it would be worthwhile just bringing it up if you look on our sheet of planetary hours and you say well I was born at you know whatever 2 a.m. or 2:15 a.m. so Uriel is my birth, one of my birth angels, because that was the, the the planetary hour. Yeah, I mean, you definitely, if the, if the, you feel the significance of that, and you want to work with Uriel because he he happened to be the the angel of the hour when you were born, that's fine, that is absolutely fine. But I'm slightly dubious as to the efficacy of that, um, just because. The day of the week is stretching it just a little bit <laughs> already, even though a lot of people use it and, and I include it. The day of the week has no astrological significance, but it does, I mean, across all systems, Sunday is the sun, Monday is the moon, Tuesday is Mars, Wednesday is Mercury, Thursday is Jupiter, Friday is Venus, Saturday is Saturn, you know, so so there's a there's a tradition that never varies. So yeah, I can see, I can see, yeah, okay, so if you were born on, on, a, on a Wednesday, then Raphael's one of your birth angels. I get that. I, I can totally get behind that. But there's like three or four different systems of planetary and angelic hours, and all of them come up with a different angel. So to, to say that just because you happen to be working this system of magic that uses this particular of hours, uh, planetary hours, that that is your birth angel, I don't get that at all. Because for us, we use the planetary hours, um, and as long as you, you find a system that you like and you stick with it and you're consistent with it, it enables you to help time your, your spells and your operations so that if you're working on a complementary day of your angel, you can at least, you can at least um, uh, bring in your, the angel you want to work with the energy through their hour by being consistent with part the particular rota that you are using. But since there's so many different systems that give different hours, it's, um, it's fine for your personal magical use, but it's not a universal system that you can say, oh, well, since I use these planetary hours, therefore your birth angel is blah, blah, blah. Even though in another system of planetary hours, your birth angel would be blah, blah, blah. That makes no sense to me. We use the planetary hours as a, ma as a, as a working method for, for, um, for timing our spells. Now, 
Having said that, there are some operations which we use, which we say, now, where was the, the where, who was the, wh what was the, the uh, that planetary uh, angel at the time of your birth? We do, there are some that use that. And, and, but it's just, it's just to key you into a specific angelic energy. And they're not that common. We don't do it very often. So, having said that, really, it's mostly your, your moon angel that you gotta work with then your sun angel, and then your rising sign. The day of the week is something that you can consider. And then if you want to try playing around with the planetary, the, the planetary hour, you can. Like I said, you can't get in trouble with working with the wrong angels. It's just that you, we all came in here with certain lessons to learn. And so it's a good idea to, to stick with the real basic ones for a while at least. But eventually you're gonna work with everybody. So don't worry about it, okay? So your birth angel, is where the moon was when you were born, okay? Your secondary birth angel is where the sun was when you were born. Those two are pretty much all you need. But if you want to add a little bit of extra, you can also look at what the, the rising sign was and also what day of the week it was. If you want to add our system of planetary uh, hours to that or another system of planetary hours to see what you come up with, that's fine. You can do that. And if you happen to be drawn to working with that angel, that's great. And maybe the way that that particular angel is communicating with you, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. You can't go wrong. All right. So I hope I cleared some of that up. And uh, so go ahead and find out your, who your birth angel is and, and then you start working with them. Now, the, the first thing that you can do, even before you decide that you want to get um, too far into all these like formal operations and things like that, is what is called the, the, uh, the angelic silence. And we talk about that on the, on the board. We, we were talking about that on the uh, Facebook group a little bit. So what you, it's, it's what you do is you find, where is it? Um, you look up your um, where you are on which sphere you are. So let's say you had um, uh, Aries Moon. And so you're going to be working with with um, you're going to be working with Samael, right? Now we want you to do this on either on a day that is complementary to your angel. So if your angel only, you know, works on a couple of days, that's another reason for looking at some of these other angels so that you so that you don't have to go dark. So definitely on Tuesdays, um, he also works well on Thursdays and Wednesdays. So Tuesday, Thursday, Wednesday, you can work with with um, uh, with Samael, right? So on those days, what you're going to do when you're going into the angelic silence is you're just going to Relax your body. It's really simple. Relax your body. Relax your mind. Do some sort of grounding and centering. I, I recommend maybe uh, the orb of light and the grounding and centering from a witch's primer. Those are great for, for working. Uh, and you can even color the sphere of your orb of light, the color of this sphere that you're working with. So you could do a nice bright positive red if you were working with Samael. And then you verbally just ask the angel, the archangel, to make their presence known to you. Then you go and you quiet your mind and mentally you start to, uh, like as a vibration, like an inner mantra, re mentally repeat the God name. So in this it would be Elohim Gibor over and over again. And you can and you can just keep it going or you can do it intermittently. You can have, it, it's a good idea to just like stop the mantra every so often and just listen to the silence so that you can, so that you can start listening to your angel and just do that. Um, uh, I recommend you start like with one or two minutes a day and then you, you, you up your, the time that you're spending with um, your angel till you get about, you know, 20 minutes a day. Now on the days that are not complementary to your moon angel, then you can work with your sun angel. Okay. And, and then if, if there are days that are not complementary with either of those, that's when you can maybe bring in your, your rising sign angel. Okay, so those are the, the, the three that I would work with, and maybe even the day of the week. Now, if all of those four, uh, if you, let's say you, like I only have two angels, because I because it's either Samael or Uriel. I mean, no matter how you slice it, whether it's even down to the freaking angelic hour, I, just, I only have two angels. So on the days, there are days that are not compatible to either Uriel or um Samael. So on those days, if I want to work the angelic silence, I just work with whoever happens to be the angel of that day. And I do the same exact 
procedure. I calm my mind, I do my orb of light, I ground and center, I, I verbally ask the angel to, to reveal themselves to me, and then I silently um, repeat the, um, the God name to myself. Now, Av, after you've worked with your, your birth angels for a while, you're more than welcome to go into the silence with each and any of these angels that you would like to work with. And then you'll notice that soon, um, hello, soon we will start to work with these branches. They call them paths in a lot of, in a lot of the um, systems. So we will start working with a lot of these. And then what you can do is as you as you're after you've had some 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 time in the silence with 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 this especially the most prominent spheres on your chart, then you can start to travel between the spheres. And that's when things start to really really happen for you. Okay, and then we can even start working with some of these supernal spheres that that don't have the um, the angels, right? So, so those branches, those paths, are going to be a, a wonderful part of of how we also work within this silence. And we'll get to that eventually. We're not going to get to that right away, but we will get to that eventually. But start out with just easily becoming. Uh, acquainted with your birth angels in the silence use the um, use these um, God names like I said to to really attune yourself to those spheres and ask that that angel let itself be known to you allow yourself to feel safe and wonderful you are in good hands with the angels they are very safe they they are beings of pure love and pure light yes they can be a bit severe sometimes <laughs> but we like that that's because they're powerful and they're here to help they're here to teach we don't always feel like learning the lessons they want us to learn but after a while we learned that the, the that if we just kind of let go and 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 uh, become attentive to the lessons that they want to teach us that that actually our lives improve rather dramatically and very very quickly sometimes instantly and that's why people call a lot of what uh, this magic they call it somewhat miraculous because some of these changes can be um, almost startling how quickly they can happen when we say yes when we say yes to the, what the angels are asking of us all right so get to know your birth angels I hope this was good a uh, good uh, introduction for you and I hope you find it interesting and I can't wait to work with you again. Blessed be.